Hey guys, welcome to a new video, and uh, welcome in my, uh, well, in my car. Uh, a while back, I unboxed this guy during a Quinboxed, and this is supposedly a 100 watt car or car phone charger, or since it does USB PD and stuff like that, it could also charge laptops and tablets really, really fast, or even at all, because a lot of laptops, if you don't have enough USB PD power, it just won't charge. So, uh, well, that's why we're in my car. Let's test that out today and see how it goes. I've actually, uh, you know, my laptop right there, and uh, let's try it on my phone and uh, some testing equipment and see how well it does. Right, so to start off, after looking at those specifications and the information screen that's on there, which is actually pretty cool, uh, let's uh, start by using the included cable, which is a 100 watt uh, variant, so it should do 20 volt uh, 5 amps. Uh, let's see if I can do this one handed somehow. Let's uh, plug this in, see what my phone says. It says uh, super fast charging, okay. And uh, let's see what the little display says. 9.6 volts, okay. 17, 18 watt. Okay, that's uh, fairly decent, I guess. And then it shows the, uh, the other output too, but that will be zero watts, of course, because that's not doing anything right now. But in theory, you can use those at the same time. Now the 12.9, I think, is my input voltage from the car. And then this 9.2 volt is what's going to the phone. Okay, it's currently doing 16 watts. And this is a uh, Galaxy S20 Plus. So doing around uh, 16 or 18 watts is pretty much expected, I think. Okay, uh, let's do the same test, but then with a power meter in between. Okay, let's try it with my meter attached so we can see. Don't know if I can do this with one hand. I guess so. Uh, I don't know. Okay, and let's see what it says. Okay, phone is asking 9.36 volts at about 2 amps. So that is indeed the 17 or 18 watts we were seeing before just on the little display of the charger itself. But yeah, that's pretty good. That seems to be doing USB PD and stuff like that. And well, as the phone says, it's uh, it's gonna be full pretty quickly. Okay, let's move on to something bigger like a laptop. Okay, cause I had to balance my laptop here on the edge of the seat. Cause you know, I'm in a car. Uh, I already plugged it in. And let me see if I can get you a shot. Cause it's currently doing 83 watts, damn. Yeah, that seems to be working great. So it's getting 19.4 volts at 4.3 amps. And well, yeah, 83 watts. That's almost the maximum this laptop can take. It can take up to 90 watts. I've seen it do before with the original, originally included charger. So let's see what the little display here says. So that's the battery voltage. 20.3 volts is going out, so it's boosting the voltage, that's good. And 86.4 watts, yeah, that's exactly what we'd expect. Damn, okay, well, I guess that verifies that this is definitely a real USB PD 3.0 charger, and it can charge uh, really power-hungry laptops in your car. It's hard to show you with all the glare going on. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave this charged for a while and see how it does. Right, so about 10 minutes have passed and we can see that the current to the laptop has dropped somewhat. So let's look at the thermals of the plug to see if that's being thermally regulated or if that's maybe the laptop doing the regulation. I actually don't know its charging profile that well. Okay, I'll uh, overlay the floor image or video over this shot. And it seems to have gone up to about 
50 to 60 degrees, which I, I, I'd say that's within margin of oh, expected temperature, because that's on the outside. On the inside, it's likely a little bit hotter. It's still doing 20 volts, that's fine. Uh, but it's it's fluctuating between 58, 61, 62, 64 watts. So the wattage has certainly gone down. Now, to make sure that's not my laptop, but the charger probably throttling back because of heat, I'm going to unplug it for a little bit and then replug it to see if cooling down the charger uh, actually helps with that. Oh, uh, okay. It's back up to 82, 84 watts. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to keep watching this for a little bit. Okay, so I had the charger unplugged for a few minutes and I looked at the temperatures and stuff like that. It don't seem fine. Uh, but plugging it back in now, I don't see a huge increase in charging current or anything like that. So it's likely the laptop not wanting more power at this point in time. I have one last test I'm going to try and set up to see if we can determine if that is actually the case. Right, the more elaborate testing setup is, uh, well, set up. If you see here, we have our little charger and we also have this guy now. Now, this is how I used to charge my laptop in my car because this is a DC to AC inverter. And well, I needed a 12 volt adapter, which I put at 12 volt and not 13 or 14. So that's going to my tester unit and my tester unit. And uh, let me try and get rid of the glare. Uh, something like that uh, can do up to 25 amps. But of course, it doesn't do any USB-C uh, triggering. So that's why I have this little guy and I'll make sure to have everything linked in the description. Uh, but this guy can be set to trigger the PD output to anything you want. And currently it's set to the uh, 20 volt 5 amp setting. So let's, uh, let's see what that does if I turn my testing unit on. There we go. It starts drawing uh, 4 amps. So that it gets, it's getting about 19.3 volts. That's the, likely the voltage drop over the cable and with the tester in between and stuff like that. But we're still getting a 77 watts, so that's pretty good. And this uh, timer discharge will stop the test after one hour. But let's leave it running for 10 minutes and see if we can draw the 4 amps for 10 minutes. And then I'll actually up it to 5 amps to see what happens. Okay, we've uh, passed the 10 minute mark and I just did a FLIR test, which I'll overlay. But looking at our tester, uh, it seems that the power really hasn't changed much. We're still getting 19.4 volts, but that's because of cable drop and the test or voltage drop on the cable and the tester and stuff like that. But the load has remained 77 watts uh, quite stable. And well, the plug hasn't really gotten very hot or anything like that either. So while we're filming, let's uh, up it to 5 amps. Yeah, seems to do that too. So now we're at 96 watts, or kind of 100 watts if we measure on the other end of the cable. Uh, I'll leave that running for a little bit, and then I guess I'll film a conclusion. All right, so conclusion time before, well, it's already starting. I lose all daylight. I think that worked great. Uh, it did the 20 volt 5 amp output at, with no problem on the laptop or on the tester, even running for 10 minutes. And I think the dropped output on the laptop was actually the laptop itself not wanting to charge more at that time. I, I also did some tests uh, using the USB-A next to the USB-C and it neatly dropped down its USB-C maximum power from uh, 30, uh, 20 volt uh, 5 amp to 20 volt 3.25 amp. But that's still 65 watt, so we'll charge most laptops and stuff like that. And uh, while, while doing the 20 volt 5 amp test, sure, it did get kind of hot, if you can, as you can see here on the FLIR images, but normally that test wouldn't last 10 or 20 minutes like I've been doing it. So I think, well, if you need the most high powerful charger for in your car, <laughs> I think this is it. So at least for me, 
I'll be able to, uh, well, not have to use that little inverter anymore. And I can just plug it directly into my charger that I'll have there for my phone and other stuff anyway. And I mean, if you're just looking for a high powered charger that will keep your phone topped up even while using the GPS or other stuff, I think this is it. The included 100 watt cable also did perfectly fine. I also tested some cables from Besus and from Akula and uh, well, those also performed great. They did uh, the USB PD and they did the five amps and stuff like that. So if you're looking to pick anything of this up, including, well, the charger itself, but also the testing equipment I used and the cables and stuff like that, I will have affiliate links in the video description. And let me know down in the comments if you have been looking for a charger like this also, because I know I have for a few years and I don't think they were able to build them before this. It's probably using gallium nitrite uh, technology to do this, to be able to be small enough and not get too hot. But I don't, I don't know that for sure because I haven't, well, I haven't opened it up and I'm not going to because I'm just going to use it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Very different video than, well, other times. Hope you liked it anyway. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.